This is a worked example for analyzing and forecasting the ceiling behavior across faults in a succession of sandstones and shales. We're going to use the shale gouge ratio, but first we're going to plot the possible juxtapositions of sandstones using a triangle plot. This illustration uses concepts on juxtaposition and the shale gouge ratio that you can find more extensively described in other videos on the ShearZone channel. A clean example of this exercise is available to download from the ShearZone website so you can have a go yourself. Or you could treat this video as a work solution if you're going to provide it to a student group. So here's a stratigraphic section of beige sandstones and mauve shales. And we want to ask ourselves how would variations in throw across a fault that cuts this succession produce different sand on sand contacts. And then we want to ask whether these sand on sand contacts are able to provide punication of say fluids across the fault. In other words we'll predict the fault seeming behaviour and we'll use the parameter the shale gouge ratio. We'll start off by constructing a triangle plot that will look at the juxtapositions of the various sandstones and shales and how they vary with throw on a fault. So on the triangle plot I put the stratigraphy up the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis I've labelled the throw. The first thing we want to do is to replot the stratigraphic section along the throw axis and we do that by simply spinning our log section like this. And so we've replotted the stratigraphy in exactly the same scale along the throw axis. The next thing we want to do is to plot the stratigraphy as though we were plotting the foot wall like this. So we've just extrapolated our stratigraphy horizontally across the diagram. Now we're going to plot the offsets of these units linking to the throw axis. So for example here I've joined up sandstone Y with its position on the vertical and throw axis. This if you like shows the position of the hanging wall as we increase the throw on the fault from zero on the left down towards six meters on the right and any further throw on this fault would move Y out of our area of interest. And now we can plot all our various units in the same way, just as simple diagonals completing the triangle plot. And where the colour intensity is greatest on here, these are places where there's sand on sand juxtaposition. Now let's see where the juxtaposition of sandstone X and sandstone Y plot. It's this domain here. So we can ask ourselves now, over what range of throws does this juxtaposition occur? So I've just picked out the end members or the extreme values of this domain. And we can read off what those represent in terms of throw from the throw axis. So we see that X and Y are juxtaposed when a fault has a throw somewhere between 7.8 and 14 metres. So this is a really quick way of illustrating how different units are juxtaposed as faults that cut this succession vary their throw. Now let's examine whether a fault that juxtaposes sandstone X and Y will actually permit fluid transmissibility between them. We're going to calculate the shale gouge ratio. So these are the various shale units, there are three of them, that will have been swept past unit Y as X comes down to juxtapose against it. So now we have to sum the shale thickness between these two sandstone formations. And we do that, it comes out at 5 metres. So now if we're going to calculate shale gouge ratio, we need to divide this summed shale thickness by the throw. And we're going to look at two throws which represent the extreme values from our triangle plot. Let's start off with the small throw. This is a value of 7.8 metres, so we divide 5 metres by 7.8 metres, multiply by 100, and it gives us our shell gouge ratio of 64%. Let's do the same now for the larger throw. 
which is 14 meters. So divide five by 14, multiply by 100, and that gives us the shell gouge ratio here of 36%. So we've got different values for shell gouge ratio depending on the throw. Now, a shell gouge ratio in excess of about 15 or 20% means that the fault is likely to be sealing. So in our situation here, even though sandstone X and Y are juxtaposed, there's very unlikely to be fluid movement between these two sandstone units, even though they're juxtaposed, because the fault that has done the juxtaposition is likely to be sealing. So this is a really quick exercise. Now, of course, we could calculate the shell gouge ratio for the remainder of the triangle plot to show how the SGR varies with throw and shell distribution for this faulted succession. So a really quick worked example of the application of the triangle plot and the shell gouge ratio to examine fault seal.